Hi everyone, welcome to this new tutorial video of software Mark Mentat. In this video, we are going to discuss about one powerful feature available in Mark Mentat, which is global remeshing. First, what's remeshing? As you know, in finite element analysis, any body will be divided into multiple finite elements as shown over here. Now the process of replacing old mesh of part with a new mesh is called remeshing. While we perform this remeshing, we can control many things such as as you can see over here as remeshing is happening mesh is getting finer near this corner and why we need this remeshing is to compensate for huge deformations of original mesh sometimes what happens is as simulation progresses few elements in the original mesh will get deformed by huge amount and that will cause convergence error so we'll not be able to complete the simulation you can see in the example over here if we don't perform remeshing, the original mesh will get highly distorted once this rubber bush enters this housing. But with periodically remeshing the body, we can get good results. Another reason to perform remeshing is to obtain accurate results in critical areas. Some examples are shown over here. In these areas, there is a stress concentration. So we need finer mesh to capture that stress concentration accurately. And finally, to save computational cost as well. In remeshing, not necessarily we always have to make mesh finer. Sometimes we can make it coarser as well. So let's say if Mark figured out this much fine mesh is not needed, then it can remesh, make the mesh coarser, and then simulation will run quicker. This remeshing can be done easily in Mark. And Mark has two types of remeshing. One, it's called global remeshing. Here, whole body gets remeshed. This is the original mesh, and there is some crack over here. So we are remeshing the whole body with finer elements near the crack. And another type is local adaptivity. Here Mark doesn't remesh whole body, but it divides the current elements into smaller elements. Let's say this is the original element. Then it get divides into four smaller element. Again, one element out of this is getting divided into even smaller elements and so on. Hence here, the original mesh is preserved, but elements are refined. Now in this tutorial, we are going to cover only global remeshing. I will put out a separate video for this local adaptivity. Before we go into example, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of how this global remeshing works. In Mark, we have to define a contact body for this global remeshing to take place. It can be just one single contact body or it can be multiple contact bodies as well. And it is available in both 2D and 3D contact bodies. For global remeshing, user can provide these five inputs. First, user has to tell which body to remesh. So if your model has five, six bodies, you can choose which bodies you want to remesh. Then you have to specify which mesh generator. This option is necessary because Mark Mintat has multiple mesh generators and we have to choose appropriate one which will be used to create this mesh. Then we have to answer two important questions. First is remeshing criteria. Using this, we are basically telling Mark when do we want body to get remeshed. We can say like remesh it at the beginning of analysis, we can say keep remeshing it periodically, let's say after every 10 increments or so, or we can even say when specific criteria is met, then remesh the body. But here we are telling when to remesh. And other thing is remeshing parameters where we are telling Mark how to remesh. Where do you want finer elements? Where do you want coarser elements or things like that? And apart from these four inputs, user can also add some advanced controls. These are optional, but using these controls, we can remesh the body exactly how we want. And here it shows how it works. Let's say we have a body as shown over here. We have some mesh. Then when Mark is going to remesh in first step, Mark extracts the outline of this body or a surface if it is a 3D body. Then that outline will be cleaned up a little bit and new mesh will be generated on that outline. Once new mesh is generated, all the data from old mesh will be transferred to new mesh. It includes all the solution parameters, nodal quantities such as displacements, etc. Then if this body had some contact parameters, those will be also transferred. Then of course we have to transfer boundary conditions and loads. And once all this transfer is done, this new mesh will be ready for further analysis. Now let's see one simple example to understand how this really works. This is the geometry. It's a rectangular plate with a circular hole at the center. This left edge cannot move in X direction and this bottom edge cannot move in Y direction. And we will apply some uniform pressure on this right edge. For material, I will use very simple elastic material model. 
with Young's modulus 200 gigapascal and Poisson's ratio 0.3 and we will assume plain stress formulation with element type 3. Initially we will start with very coarse mesh and then we will see different options how we can remesh this body and those options are given over here. So we'll try five different scenarios. In first scenario we will remesh based on curvature. So wherever there is a curve we will use finer elements over here. So we should expect to get finer mesh near this hole. Then in second scenario we can specify some region where we want finer mesh. Maybe we will specify some rectangle like this and we will get finer mesh in this half plate. Then next is partial body remesh. There is option in mark where you don't have to remesh the whole body but you can choose part of body that also we will see and for all three first scenarios we will just do remeshing once which is at the beginning of analysis. But for last two scenarios, we will keep doing remeshing after every three increments. In this fourth scenario, we will perform remeshing based on von Mises stress. Basically, in the area of higher stress, we will use finer mesh. And finally, using displacement. Wherever there is high displacement, we will use finer mesh. So let's start with Mark Mentat. Before start modeling, make sure to select current directory. I have created one empty folder and I will select that as my current directory. Then make sure unit is in millimeter and choose analysis type as planar. First, let's create plate. For that, I will create one rectangle first and I'm going to use this solids option. Over here, I will choose rectangle and then add rectangle. Then it will ask for coordinates, zero, zero. We have to give all three coordinates and then width is 100 and height is 50 and our rectangle is ready. Now I will create one more circular solid at the center and later we will subtract that solid from this rectangle. So change this to circle, add. Now the coordinate for center will be 50, 25 and 0 and radius is 5 millimeter. So this is another solid. Then close this and go into this solid operations. Here we can subtract one solid from another. So select subtract. Make sure to disable this dynamic rotation. Now it is asking enter subtract from solid. So we are going to subtract from this rectangle and what we are going to subtract is this circle. Now to choose this circle you just have to draw a rectangle over here and then that circle will be selected. That's it. Just click right mouse button anywhere and you will have a plate with a hole. It's that easy. Now let's mesh it. For meshing, we are going to choose surfaces in auto mesh. In description, we have to change this to sheets. I'm going to use quad elements. Order I will keep linear. And now just click on this quad, click on this body and boom, mesh is done. This mesh is very coarse. So let's make it little bit finer. You can either use this scale factor, but I personally like to select manual mode. And here we can give element sides. Let me give this as 5. Again, click quad, select this body and mesh is ready. You don't have to delete old mesh. Whenever you mesh it again, the old mesh automatically gets deleted. This is very unique feature about Mentat, which is super useful. Next, let's go to material properties and create new material. I'm not going to change anything over here. Everything, let's keep it standard. Only Young's modulus is 200 gigapascal. We have to enter here in megapascal. That's why three more zeros and Poisson's ratio 0.3. Now we can either assign it to elements or bodies. It is better to assign to body because for some reason, if you decide to change the mesh, again, you have to assign material over here. So let's add body. Click on this body. Done. One body is selected. Next, let's go to boundary conditions. Let me rename it to fix X and here we will fix X displacement, choose solid edges and select this edge. Say OK. Another boundary condition. Fix Y again solid edges and bottom edge. And finally load on the right edge. Edge load. I will just ramp it to the current value, pressure, and it will be minus 1000. Minus because we want tensile load. And again, solid edge on the right side. 
done if you want to see all boundary conditions together you can click on this identify you can even make these arrows bigger using this button over here now let's create one load case static load case we don't need these many steps so i will make these steps 10 and that's it and finally job choose this load case and in initial load i am going to deactivate this edge load I want to add my stress in job results. So here I will add equivalent one my stress. Say OK. Say OK. Now only one thing remaining is to choose element type. If you identify element type here in jobs, then you will see as of now we don't have any element type assigned. To assign, click on this element types, then solid, and here number three. We want plain stress full integration elements. So click on this. Choose all the elements and done. Now if you see here element type is assigned. So I will deactivate this and before inserting global remeshing, let's just run this job once. It works perfect. Exit number 3004. Let's open the result file and if we see contours, let's see stress values and you can see there is a huge stress concentration over here. And as we are not using finer mesh in this area, geometry is represented very poorly. Therefore, let's introduce global remeshing. Let's go back to our model. Here we have to go to mesh adaptivity. But as I said, this global remeshing can be applied only to contact body. So although there is no contact in this model, we have to define a contact body. Hence, first go to contact, create one new contact body, which is meshed deformable in this case. Add one solid this plate and say ok. Now we have one contact body. So let's go back to mesh adaptivity and now create new criteria. First we have to choose which measure we want. I still want quad elements so I will go with mesh on mesh quad. Let's name this criteria as curvature based. Then select the contact body. I want remeshing to be done immediately before even analysis starts as you can see in this table. So we are going with first scenario. Immediate remeshing and based on curvature. Global mesh density, I am keeping uniform and overall edge length, I am keeping 5. So whenever body is getting remesh, Mark will try to keep element length 5 for whole body and 5 is the element length of current elements. So it doesn't make sense yet. But then we can add one additional density control based on curvature and here we can define how many elements we want along a particular curve. So here I will keep 36. And there is only one curve in our model. So here we will get finer mesh. Minimum element length I will keep 0.1. Maximum again 5. Say OK and say OK. One thing about global remeshing is you have to activate this criteria in load case. So let's open load case. And here in global remeshing you have to select this criteria. Say OK and then submit the job again. Now you can see in front of remeshes, we are seeing one. That means during the analysis, one time remeshing happened. Let's see the result file. This is our original mesh. And if you go to next increment, you can see the new mesh. And here this curve is represented beautifully. It is much better than what we had earlier. Now if we see the stress, it is giving us much accurate results. Now instead of curvature, let's choose the second scenario which is this based on specific region. So let me go back to the model. Now we can just modify this criterion or we can create new criterion as well. So I will create new criterion. Again, mesh on mesh quad, same body. And here I will rename it as region based. Again, we want immediate remeshing, element length 5. And now the additional density control will be based on region. When we choose this region, there are a couple of options. Region can be either rectangle or circle. I will keep this rectangle. First corner node 0, 0 and second corner node, let's say 50, 50. And you can see this region over here with yellow line. And within this region, I am saying I want element size to be 1. So overall element size is 5, but in this region it is 1. So in this region, we are getting finer mesh. One unique thing about mark is this region control. This region by default will be fixed in position. But if you want, you can move this region as well. 
This region can follow some node, it can follow some contact body or it can even have its own velocity. For this first tutorial, we will just keep it fixed. But later on, maybe we can create more complicated tutorials where it can move with contact body. Say OK and again say OK. Now we have to go to the load case and change this criterion from curvature based to region based. Say OK, say OK and again submit the job. One time remeshing happened. Let's see the results. This is initial mesh and boom, this is the new mesh. On the left hand side, we got finer mesh and on the right hand side, we have coarser mesh. If you observe here, the element size increases gradually. And if you compare with the old mesh, although we selected this half plate as region, the whole body got remeshed. But let's say you want to preserve the mesh on this right hand side. You want finer elements in the left hand side, but you don't want this right hand side body to get remeshed at all. That can be done using the third scenario, which is partial body remesh. So let's see that there is a subtle difference between these two. You can see over here, whole body is getting remeshed. But now let's go back and I will modify this criterion itself. Here we can choose remesh only designated regions and this additional density control, we will get rid of it. Now let's define that same region. But over here, we have two options. Either region can be chosen using elements or geometry. Let's go ahead with elements. And here we will add only these many elements. So 102 elements, say OK. Now whole body is not going to get remeshed. Only this left hand side will get remeshed. And we want element size one over here. Say OK. Criterion is already activated in load case. So just submit the job again. Let's see the results and let's see what is the difference. Original mesh and new mesh. Here you can see the clear boundary. The right hand side mesh is preserved. In some applications, this is necessary. So that option is also there in mark. Now let's move on to fourth scenario, which is remeshing based on one mice's stress. Let's close this. And now I will create new criterion mesh adaptivity new mesh on mesh quad and this I will rename stress based. Same body here. I will choose frequency. We have total 10 increments and I will choose remeshing after every three increments. So body will undergo remeshing three times overall length. Again, I will choose five and here we will add control based on element quantity. We have to choose which element quantity over here. These many options are available. I will choose the one mice stress. Here we have to define what should be the element size for lower threshold. I will choose five. That means if one mice stress is low, element size will be five. And for upper threshold, I will choose one or maybe let's say 0 0.5. Let's make it even finer. These lower and upper threshold values by default, they will be zero and one. This also we can change one means maximum stress. So at maximum stress, we are getting elements of size 0 0.5 millimeters. And for lower threshold, let's make it 0 0.5. So at the stress of 50%, we will get element length 5 millimeters. And of course, anything below 50%, we will get 5 because we are defining 5 over here. That's it. Say OK. Don't forget to change that criterion. Here now we will choose stress based. and submit the job again. Notice that here now three times remeshing happened because we are choosing periodic remeshing. Let's open the results. Now let's go to the next increment. In first increment, mesh is not changed, not up to three increments. Now remeshing is going to happen. So let's see fourth increment and you can see the new mesh. Here elements are finer where stress is high and elements are coarser where stress is low. And this will happen two more times again and last time. Now, lastly, let's see this where we will do remeshing based on nodal quantity. I will modify this criteria itself. We just have to get rid of this and add new control based on nodal quantity. Again, so many nodal quantities to choose from. I'm going to choose total displacement. I will not change threshold values. At lower threshold, let's say 5. At upper threshold, 0 0.5. Say OK, OK, and submit the job again because already it is selected in load case. Remeshing should happen three times. And now let's change this to displacement.
displacement is higher on this right hand side and lowest on the left hand side. So what we should expect is as we go from left to right, the element size should decrease and that's what exactly happening here. I guess that's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And there are some more complicated examples available in Mark user's guide. But for this tutorial, we will not go into them. And as always, thank you for watching.